Hey, what's going on everyone? Ted Carr here and in today's video, I would like to share with you four of the limiting beliefs that I had when I first got into making sales online and when I first got into becoming an online entrepreneur. These were the four things that really tripped me up and slowed me down and prevented me from just going full out like I am now. It's so interesting, like where I'm at now, I'm thinking like I could have been doing this five years ago had it not been for this right here, has it not, had it not been for my limiting beliefs. And I'm sure it's the same way with you with, with like veganism or raw foods, it's like, or even your fitness, like you could have been doing what you're doing now five years ago had you just known how to do it and had you just had the right mentality, had you ha had you had the right beliefs. But with veganism, I wasn't vegan before I became vegan because I had the wrong beliefs. I thought being vegan meant you had to be really restricted, I thought you'd be deficient in nutrients, I thought, uh, it was just too difficult. I thought it was like too weird. I thought it was unnecessary. I didn't have the beliefs I have now, which are like, it's completely necessary to be vegan. Uh, you're not gonna be deficient in anything. It's actually super easy. And um, it, there's tons of variety. You're not limited at all. If anything, you have more variety. So that's just the beliefs I have now. It's like the exact opposite of what I had before I was vegan. So if you have a limiting belief that's slowing you down, stopping you, Consider flipping it. Consider just having the opposite belief. If you have a limiting belief, let's say you have the belief that you're ugly. Flip it and be like, start believing that you're actually good looking, that you're attractive. Just start believing that. And it can be difficult initially, sure, but if you at least make the intention, you can at least start making steps towards having that belief. So in this video, like I said, I want to discuss four of the limiting beliefs I had when I first got into online entrepreneurship and how I overcame those and what my logic is now for believing in the opposite of what I once believed. So the first thing is that I didn't feel like I knew enough. I didn't feel like I knew enough to teach others something that they would pay me for. Like, I always kept thinking, I always kept compare, compare myself to others. I'm like, there are authors out there. There are public speakers out there. There are like famous people out there. There are professional gurus out there that know way more than I do. So why would anyone pay me? Like, I'm just some chump. You know, I'm just some kid. Why would they pay me? Yeah, I know a bit about nutrition. Yeah, I know a bit about health. Yeah, I know a bit about fitness. But why would anyone pay me for that? It's not enough. I don't know enough. Once I know enough, then I'll start a YouTube channel. Then I'll start an Instagram. Then I'll put out a course. Then I'll offer coaching. But only once I know enough. And when is this mystical enough ever going to come? I don't know. But once I know, then, then I'll know. It, it, it's just a feeling I have. So looking back, it's just the craziest belief ever to have, not knowing enough. Here's the thing. You're never going to know it all. Even me teaching business right now, even me making $60,000 a month right now, I don't know it all. And I'm teaching business to people. I don't know everything, but I don't need to know everything. Just like you don't need to know everything. See, what you need to know is just how to help somebody get a result. That's it. You need to know how to help them go from A to Z. A might be overweight, Z might be 20 pounds down. A might be not vegan, Z might be eating a vegan diet. A might be not knowing how to run five kilometers under 25 minutes, Z might be running 5K under 25 minutes. You just find out where your prospect is at now, where you wanna start working with them, what level they're at, and then where you want them to be, A to Z. And if you know how to get help them get there, then you know enough, you know enough to charge for their services. In the movie, Catch Me If You Can, Leonardo DiCaprio plays a character called Frank Abagnale. True story about Frank Abagnale. And Frank Abagnale was like a con man. And what he did was he went into a college one time or a university one time and he pretended to be a university teacher. And he ended up teaching an entire semester in university. And he just, the whole class believed he was the teacher. And no one ever actually found out until once he like got caught and got arrested many, many years later, the police officers asked him, like, hey, how did you teach that university class? How did you teach the whole semester? It was like in physics or something, something crazy. And he's like, oh, I just read one chapter ahead of the class and I assigned them homework from the previous chapter. So he just kept reading one chapter ahead. He just said one chapter ahead and he's able to teach an entire freaking class. No one knew anything. No one knew he was not, no one knew he was an imposter, anything like that. You just stay a chapter ahead. So that's the tip right there. Stay a chapter ahead. Again, I don't know everything. I'm still teaching everything I do know and I'm always learning more. You're always going to be learning more. You're never going to stop learning. All good teachers know this. You never stop learning. So you're, there's never going to come a mystical point where you know everything or you know enough. You, all you need to know is how to help somebody get a result. 
Okay, that's enough. That's what we define enough. Can you help somebody get a result? And you probably can if you yourself know how to get that result for yourself. Okay, so my friend, he's a chiropractor. He just got 500 Google reviews as a chiropractor. He's the first chiropractor in all of Canada. I think second chiropractor in the entire world to get over 500 reviews on Google. In fact, he's the first ever solo chiropractor, solo, solo practitioner to get over 500 reviews. The other chiropractic clinic has like seven different chiropractors working there. That's how they got over 500 reviews. He's the first ever to get over 500 reviews. He's done it. Now he's putting together a program to teach people how to get over 500 Google reviews. Super cool. He's never taught it before, but he knows how to do it himself. He's just going to teach people what he did to get it. Okay, so just teach people what you did to get your result. You are an expert in your own personal experience. Teach that. So that's the first thing. The second belief I had was that, okay, even though I know it, even though I know enough, let's just say I believe that, even though I know enough, even though I know how to help people eat a raw food diet, or even though I know how to help people eat a vegan diet, my content's probably not good enough. There's way better content out there. There's people with really nice cameras, there's people with really nice microphones, there's people with really, really nice backdrops, really nice wardrobe, really nice voice, they got that accent, maybe they got an Australian accent or British accent. But me, I stumble, I mumble, I'm shy in front of the camera, my content doesn't sound good. It's like handheld on a freaking handheld tripod thing. I don't even have a tripod, I'm holding the camera with my hand. It's just not gonna be good enough. And the way I got over this belief was I, I was watching a lot of my favorite YouTubers and I'm like, their quality sucks. Like, they have a little stupid tripod, it's set up and they're like 10 feet away and they're like, they're like raising their voice so that it hits the camera. Another one's just like holding a little digital camera back when you had digital cameras and you're just filming everything with a digital camera, digital pocket camera. The quality sucked. My favorite YouTubers never had polished videos. My favorite YouTubers made videos of them walking around on the beach and on the and riding their bikes and, you know, just being themselves in their house or whatever, just quick quick little videos holding the, holding the camera like I am right now. And I'm like, well, if my favorite YouTubers are doing that, why don't I just do that? And so even to this day, I know my content quality, like the visual and everything, the audio is probably not like 10 out of 10 quality, but it doesn't matter. What matters in terms of you making an impact, in terms of you making sales, is are you actually putting it out there, period. Because getting it done is better than none. Getting it done is better than none. So if you have no content, how is that helping anyone? It's not. If you have some crappy content, at least it's helping some people. If you have amazing content, okay, congrats, you have amazing content. Whoop de do, pat yourself on the back, who cares? Did you help people? Yes or no? Because you can have amazing content, didn't help anyone. So I'd rather have crappy quality content that really helps people than really amazing content that doesn't even help people or that I never put out because it's too hard to even make in the first place. So the best content is the content you're gonna put out that actually makes an impact. So that's how I got over that one, just realizing that my favorite YouTubers didn't put out crazy, good, high quality content, so why should I? That's how I did that one. The third limiting belief I had was that, okay, let's say I know enough to help someone get a result. Let's say I can put out some kind of crappy videos like this. The market's too saturated. There's already a lot of people doing it. There's already tons of vegans. There's already tons of raw vegans. There's already tons of business coaches out there. There's already tons of personal trainers. What would make me stand out? Why would anyone want to watch me? And the way I got over this one was I just realized in high school, high school there was like 500 kids, right? And everyone had friends. And I kept thinking, like, well, I had friends. And even though everyone else had friends, like, even though the friend market was saturated, like, everyone already had a bunch of friends, there was still room for me to be someone's friend because if they liked me, we'd be friends. And, like, I was friends with someone. Let's say I was friends with a guy named Josh. Well, there was, like, 10 other people friends with Josh as well. And let's say Josh was friends with me. Well, there's, like, 10 other people friends with me as well. So just because you have a, a friend doesn't mean you can't be friends with someone else. And just because someone's a friend with you doesn't mean you can't be friends with someone else. And same thing with like music. If you have a favorite artist, you have a favorite rapper, favorite, favorite singer, you probably have multiple favorite rappers, multiple favorite singers that you'd be happy to go and watch at a concert or happy to listen to their music as you're walking or driving or whatever. Like you can have multiple favorites. So new rappers and new singers and new artists come out all the time. And it's new YouTubers come out all the time. New Instagram come people come out all the time. It's, that's like saying like, oh, are you never going to follow another Instagrammer ever again? If you think the market's too saturated, ask yourself, are you ever going to stop following people altogether? Or are you always open to following new people? You're probably always open to following new people, always open to subscribing to new people. Because that's what humans are. We want new, we want next, we want like people who are just a little bit different, resonate with us a little bit more. So that's why I go over that one. Okay? And, and, and the other way I got over it is realizing that 
okay, what's the alternative? What, what's the opposite of a saturated market? It's a ghost town. It's a ghost town. Now, would I rather go and try and sell pens in a ghost town where nobody's walking around, or would I rather go and try to sell pens in a saturated market where there's tons of people walking around, tons of people buying and selling pens? I'd rather go into the market where people are already buying and selling pens. Same thing with veganism. I'd rather go into the vegan niche and try and sell a program in the vegan niche than go into the market and try and sell a program in the niche, which isn't even a thing. There's no such thing as a niche. It's a freaking ghost town. You can go and try and make it up right now and you'll see nobody's there. I just made it up. It's a ghost town. You don't, would you rather go into the vegan niche and sell a vegan program or into the market and try and sell a program there? Right? You'd obviously rather go into the vegan niche. So what I learned is that a saturated market is a proven market. And now when I look at saturated markets, I'm like, that's great. That's green light. Let's go. Anyone comes to me with like something I've never heard of and we Google it, we YouTube it. There's nothing much going on there. I'm like, that's a red flag. You do not want to go into that niche. It's not a winning niche. So you want a saturated market. You want a saturated niche because that is a proven niche. Okay. It's a proven market. Now, the fourth limiting belief I had was I really didn't want to come across as salesy online. I really didn't like people who came across as salesy either. I always respected people who made a lot of money with sales, but I didn't want to be the used car salesman type of person. So the way I got over this one was I started just offering free things instead. Instead of, trying to, instead, instead of saying, buy my ebook, buy my ebook, buy my ebook, which I was doing, which I didn't like doing, it felt so good just to say, hey, get my free ebook below. People started going and getting my free ebook. On the next page of the funnel, it offered them to make a little upgrade, say, hey, you got the free ebook, cool. Do you also want the audiobook upgrade for just seven bucks? People would buy that, they get the upgrade. Then on the next page it says, great, you got the ebook, you got the audiobook, now would you like the video course version for just 27 bucks? And they're like, oh my God, yeah, I got the audiobook, got the ebook, let's get the video course too. Boom, add the cart. The first time I ever launched a free funnel like that, a freebie funnel, first month, like 1500 bucks. Boom, just like that. I know it doesn't sound like a lot of money, but from there, from making 1500 bucks in my very first month, just promoting free, I was like, oh my God, like this is a whole new world. I'm just going to do this all the time now. Started doing it all the time. From there, I went on to make over $18,358 with my first ever live free training webinar. If you want an example of what that looks like, you can click the link in the description of this video. You can go to tedcarclass.com to see a live or see an automated webinar, which is like the free training. So that's it. I hope this video was helpful. That's why I overcame my four beliefs. If you would like some help, overcoming limiting beliefs that you have about online businesses that are maybe stopping you from getting started with your selling your own ebook course or coaching program click the link in the description you could go ahead and book a call with myself or someone on my team i would be happy to help you get started selling your own digital products that's it for now peace out much love adios